Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Harvey Beck at uh, Lester Memorial Methodist Church. We're glad you're joining us. This is Wednesday morning, February the 15th. And uh, those of you who join us uh, all every Wednesday, you know that I'm in a different setting. I thought I'd let you look at something different. We are in uh, our worship center that we call the Upper Room. And uh, I know many of you know that. Many of you have seen this altar. I'm going to share this with you in just a moment. But uh, Carol Roberts here at our church has put this cross, and it's got a mirror on it, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to refer back to that in just a moment. But uh, first, just wanted to let you know that uh, as I began the first of this year, I began to talk about seeking God. And, uh, and I challenged our church. I challenged myself, and I'm still challenging myself, three key things that we need to seek God, we need to surrender to God, and we need to serve God. God wants us to do those things. And uh, But in it all, he wants relationship with us. And uh, so what I want to remind you is that next Wednesday is the beginning of Lent, the season leading up to Easter. Most of you know that, but in case you don't, there are those weeks leading up to Easter. And it begins on a Wednesday evening, and this, this time it will be next Wednesday, the 22nd, where we will do the imposition of ashes and so it is Ash Wednesday. Some of you know that. If you don't, you can look that up. But we'll be talking about Ash Wednesday next Wednesday morning as we begin Lent. So our theme here at our church for the season of Lent is going to be the shadow of the cross. And that's one reason I came in this morning, because of this cross with a mirror and a cross up above. But our theme will be the shadow of the cross. The shadow of the cross should affect our lives. Uh, it should cast a shadow over the decisions that we make. It should cast a a shadow um, over uh, our desires and our, our time with God. Everything about the cross should overshadow our lives, our dreams, our visions, our hearts, everything. When we get in the shadow on the cross, it just changes things. And so uh, that will be our theme as we begin Lent. So just a heads up. Um, what I wanted to share with you this morning is that we continue to look at A.W. Tozer's book, on Wednesday night in our uh, Bible study, um, we're going to continue to look at it tonight. And it, the, in this chapter, uh, Tozer, the title of the chapter is actually removing the veil, removing the veil. And most of you probably are familiar with the Bible. We know that that when Jesus died, the veil inside the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Let me read to you just a couple of passages of Scripture to remind you of this, because this is theologically extremely important. When Jesus fulfilled all things and when he died on the cross, it changed everything for us to be able to come into the presence of God in a deeper and unique way for everyone. So here's the scene that happened, just to remind you, in Mark 15, verses 37 and 39. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, and he breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom which is significant. God tore it from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite of Jesus saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, then he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Again, that centurion soldier reminds us of, our, of the fact that Jesus Christ was fully man, but he was fully God. This is the way it reads in Luke. Now, it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Well, in the chapter, and we're going to be talking about it tonight at church, but um, the veil being torn in two is extremely, extremely significant for all of us. So the sermon title is Removing the Veil. And so he goes back, and I'm not going to go back to every bit of it, but just remind you the significance of the veil that was placed there in the Holy of Holies. Here's just a little bit of information. In the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, the returning sinner first entered the outer court where he offered a blood sacrifice on the brazen altar and washed himself in the laver, and he stood... And he stood near it, and then he passed through a veil into the holy place, not the veil of the Holy of Holies, but through a veil into the holy place where no natural light could come but the golden candlestick which spoke of Jesus, the light of the world. 
It threw its soft glow over all. There also was the showbread to tell of Jesus, the bread of life, and the altar of incense, which is a figure of unceasing prayer. Though the worshiper had enjoyed so much, still he had yet to enter the he had not yet entered the presence of God. Another veil separated the Holy of Holies, where above the mercy seat dwelt the very God Himself in awful and glorious manifestation. While the tabernacle stood, only the high priest could enter in there. And only that once a year. But he had to have a blood sacrifice, which he offered for his sins and for the sins of the people. It was this last veil which was rent when Jesus gave up the Holy Spirit. When he said, Father, I give you my spirit. And he did that on Calvary. And, and the sacred writers explained that this rending of the veil opened the way for every worshiper in the world to come by the new and living way straight into his divine presence. God wills, this is an important line, that we should push on into his presence and live our whole life there. And so that's why I want to talk to you about this. I just love this image of the cross being into a mirror because, and I encouraged our people the other day, it's been up for a couple of Sundays, but um, when I do counseling, a lot of times I will tell people, sometimes it's good to look in the mirror at yourself. And so literally in lit this cross, when you walk up to it, you know, I'm, I'm seeing myself uh, in the cross. And so to me, a part of what Jesus Christ did for us was to allow us to come through the veil when it was torn in two. So I don't care what you've done, where you've been, you can come into the Holy of Holies, not because we deserve it, but because God loves us so much and Jesus wants to have a relationship with us. And so the cross, the shadow of the cross is about a God who wants relationship with us. So again, the powerful thing about looking in the mirror of this cross is it makes you see yourself. And when you're in the shadow of the cross, we see ourselves better. Sometimes it's not so good, but because we're in the Holy of Holies, because the cross is so powerful, it allows us to repent of our sins and come to Christ. So... I hope that this makes some sense to you, but what Jesus Christ did, it's powerful, the imagery, all through the Bible, that God had this plan that Jesus Christ would die on the cross, and that veil, God knew that one day he would rip that veil in two, but there had to be the ultimate blood sacrifice, and Jesus made it. That's the good news of the gospel, is now we and you and me, God, what a thing, that we can enter into the veil and come right into the presence of God because that's what God wants. He wants you to, to, to stay and to keep you in his presence. But it takes the cross. It takes Christ dying on the cross in order that we can enter into that. And not only can we see God better, but we see ourselves better when reflected back in the shadow of the cross. Hope to see you tonight. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we're glad you joined us. Again, I'm Pastor Harvey Beck, Lester Memorial. God bless you. We love you. Hope you have a golden day.